Good morning, church. How are we? Good morning. Good to see you all here today. Please re silence your cell phone. There we go. All right. Well, Happy New Year, everybody. I hope you have plans tonight. You're going to get ready to have a great time and celebrate your existence here on this wonderful journey we call life. And I hope everybody's uh, ready for it. And uh, I am on the platform. I'm Mark. Thank you for today's flowers, uh, Charmaine and Carrick. Thank you very much. You. Very, very pretty. And we're in the Yaya's, our, our musical treat today. So let's start out with Savor the Gift. Yay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, yeah. So happy to see you all here to start our new year together. Thank you. And welcome, everybody. 
If there are any new faces out there, can we say hello? Would you like to? I'm not seeing any today. <laughs> okay, well, I'm seeing a lot of you. Remember when you were a kid, maybe? I mean, this was my experience. My dad was a pastor. And it was such a chore. It's like, you got to get up and go to church. It's like, oh, man. You know, a plumber. I love coming to this church. I, I, I hope you all feel that way. But I'm energized when I'm like, yeah, I'm going to church. And so thank you to all of you because you're all creating that energy. And, and uh, it's awesome. So thank you. And online viewers, we want to thank you for not, if you're not here, but you're watching us online, thank you for doing that. And uh, welcome, friends. We, uh, let's give our welcoming blessing. We love you, we bless you, and we welcome you. If you feel like giving someone a hug or a high five, now's the time. <laughs> All right, Jeannie is going to take us on a journey through the five-step unity prayer process. Can't wait to hear about it. Ooh, maybe I should have done, had you do this. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, last week I said there would be a test. <laughs> so, what's the first step? Relax. 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 Relaxation. Relaxation. Very good. Who wants to talk about that? What does that mean? You just have to let everything else go. Let everything go. What's on your mind? What's been happening up here? How do you do that? Connection. Connection to your heart. I heard breathe. Helen, breathe. Meditate. Last week we talked about rubbing the index finger to your thumb to feel the print on your finger. It brings you into the present moment. And why would you do that? So that you can change your brain. Because it's on this road and we want to put it on this road. Okay, so now we're going to step number two. Concentration. Yes, concentration. <laughs> Who wants to talk about that? You have to concentrate? <laughs> you have to concentrate when you pray. <laughs> <laughs> there are two parts, remember, to this step. What's the first step? God. It's the first unity principle. Focus on God. God is good. God is love. God is wise. Anything that you personally think of God, you just concentrate on God. And then when you're ready to move to the second part of step two, what's next? Prayer. Yeah. What is your prayer? What's the end result of your prayer? <clears throat> so it's not, God, please help me. No, unity believes in affirmative prayer, so it's the end result. What is it you want to pray for? And see that, you visualize it, you concentrate on the end result. With me? Mm -hmm. However long that's going to take. Now we're going to go on to step three. What's that? Meditation. Yeah. Okay. Meditation. What happens in meditation? You become silent, yes. You observe. Observe, yes. You become, you become your higher self. Your higher self. You become connected with your higher yeah, self. Like, yeah. And then, in that silence, you can be listening. I loved how you put it the last time you were talking about it. You said something about um, how you can hear an answer. Like maybe there's something that you needed to know. This is the time when you can hear, perhaps. Step four. Appreciation. Not yet. That's fine. It's mm. a beautiful word. Affirmation. Affirmation. No. Contemplation. It starts with an R. Realization. 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 We realize. What do we realize in this step? We, we are God. We are part yes. of God. Yes. We are one. We are one with all life. Therefore, we are one with pure potentiality. All, all, all things are possible. We realize this in this moment. And then, appreciation. appreciation, gratitude comes in. Any questions? 
Why we... do we keep having to be reminded? Because we just can't seem to keep that in our minds. I'm so glad you're having this class next week. <laughs> yes, there is. Thank you. That's a good segue. That next week we'll be having a class at 1230 at Julia Norton's house. Um, we're going to learn these steps personally. Like I'm, I'm talking about them, but at the class we're going to do this personally together. And, and that's part of the purpose. But the second part of the purpose is that we can pray to, with another. Because where two or three are gathered yeah. in his name, pure potentiality. So that's what we're going to get next week. There is a sign up just to let us know. So for materials, I'd like to know how many of you are coming. Um, so that would be wonderful. And of course, maybe you could bring a sack lunch or go get something to eat and then come back at 12.30. So what was the... What was the, uh, why do you have to be reminded? It's because we are habitual people. We have habits. And if we haven't worked this into a habit, we need to be reminded. Be great if we reminded ourselves every day. Once a week, is it enough? Maybe not yet. But, uh, but trying to do this practice every day, I guarantee you, you won't need to be reminded and you'll be able to be a servant with prayer very quickly. <clears throat> so, what's next? Kay Davis, you will have an opening prayer with Kay Davis. Do you want to use the podium? Uh, okay. Well, we're not supposed to be reading it, but I have to. I was afraid I'd, I'd blank out. <laughs> Oh, none of us do that game. Oh, <laughs> okay. So let's get settled in our skin. Just come down. Take some big, deep breaths. Relax inside yourself. There is only one life. That life is God. Perfect, whole, and complete. In God we live, we move, and we have our being. And God lives in us and moves through us. It is this life that is circulating through us now in happiness, in harmony and with perfect rhythm. We are one with the whole. So today we send our love and healing to those who suffer in the world and those who gather together in peace. May they be fed and comforted and know they are loved. We give thanks for peace love, and comfort. Thank you, Spirit. And we all say, Amen. Amen. Okay, you're up. The daily word is let go and let God. Let go and let God. Perfect timing for it. With a grateful heart, I bid the year farewell. As the year draws to a close, I reflect upon the joyful times as well as the lower points of the past several months. In a prayerful moment of contemplation, I feel grateful as I accept all of it. I may have laughed and cried, celebrated and grieved, but I made it. As days turned into weeks and weeks into months, I have met the year's events with faith and have grown resilient. Now it's time for me to let it all go as I prepare to begin anew. I take the lessons of the past 12 months, their joys and their sorrows, and prepare myself for a new year. I let go and I let God. As I spiritually surrender my hopes and dreams, and even my fears. 
I am divinely guided and infinitely blessed. I step boldly and bravely, bravely into a year that is mine to live to the fulfillest, to the fullest. And from Psalm 4, verse 5, offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. And now please join us in singing the song leading into our meditation. This was written by a friend of ours, uh, Le Lindsay Watkins. Watson. Watson. The late Lindsay Watson. Mm -hmm. Sorry, yeah. Confusing. Anybody who really likes praying should attend. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. So now close your eyes and breathe deeply and completely. That means feel your breath all the way to your toes, knowing that that breath is taking in your entire body and letting it out slowly and easily. Completely. Just thinking of nothing for the moment except breathing deeply. As you allow yourself to fall into a state of comfort and relaxation. And as you content, continue your relaxation breathing, bring to mind what you like best about yourself. This isn't anything you have to share with another person, but something you know to be true about yourself. As you have that trait planted deeply within your being, that thought, take it throughout your whole body with the deep breathing. Just raise your hand briefly. That's great. So almost everybody can find something about themselves that they really love. 
Next, acknowledge what you most need to change in your life. It can be a health or wellness issue, a relationship issue, a financial issue, a body image issue, a sense of any failure or need, anything at all that you know changing will make your life more fulfilling. Have faith that this change can happen. And right now and throughout this entire meditation, keep your best self fully present. Norman Vincent Peale wrote, and we are often reminded, what you think habitually will tend to happen. What we send out mentally and spiritually will return to us. We can't become what we are in our thoughts. We hear this all the time. And as the question was asked today, why do we always have to be reminded? Because there are so many other things that take up that space in our minds. He defines miracle as a cast of mind, such as that in 62nd Psalm. Wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. Remember, this is the biblical times. But what do we believe? We believe we all have God within ourselves. It is okay, even necessary, to believe that God or your spiritual leader needs and is fully open to help from the best you. The miracle principle is to expect great things and receive great things. And that can't happen with a negative attitude. And if you have the best you engaged, you're only thinking from a positive point of view. Through the great partnership you are now committing to, you can help fulfill this principle. As I sit down to start typing on the computer when I'm doing something like the meditation, I have no idea what's going to come out. But usually it ties in somehow with what we need to know, what we're learning that day, or just some way to help us in our life. So an example of how are you going to help? OK, the prayer was put out there. It's a wonderful prayer. Help feed the children. Help bring peace. It's out there. But we can see what else is out there. But now if we say, oh dear God, let's feed the hungry children of the world. Now what happens if you go to your computer, ask for guidance, find an organization that spends most of the money that they receive on delivering food to starving children. And you send out even $10 to that organization. Now you know that your prayer is going to be somewhat answered. Because somebody, some child, is going to receive at least one meal, maybe more children, more meals, from what you have put out there. So you're helping God realize what you want and need in this world. Allow the best you to assist in bringing about what most needs fixing or improving in your life. It is important to remember that you can only help fix yourself, not another person. <coughs> Share a desired change with the best you. And wait a moment or two to receive at least one solution or change in attitude even. Remember, we 
with your spiritual advisor's help and your best you, you're seeing what will make your life more comfortable coming into a new year, a new situation. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand briefly when you have a positive response. What do you need and how can you help fulfill this need through your prayers and meditations, thoughts? If you always consult the best you along with your spiritual guide when in need of a solution, you will be open to receiving a miracle. Become an active participant in your life's desires. Expect miracles and help make them happen. Thank God every day for a happy new year, a happy new day. And as you open your eyes, maintain a sense of peace within yourself, knowing all good things are possible. <laughs> Thank you, Helen. Okay, let's move on. What is the next? The yaya yeah, yeah, is a time for new beginnings. Is that is totally true. It's time to say. As we share and laugh and cry and take our lessons learned, count our blessings earned. It's time to let go of any fears that may have bound us through the years. any pretense and just be here with friends it's a time for new beginnings there's no other place to be embracing change Hearts of love, one spiritual family. There's no other way that you have to be except just the way you are. It's a time for new beginnings to say, I love. From the heart It's time to say hello To the journey yet to go Together hand in hand United we will stand It's a time. 
change with hearts of love one spiritual family there's no other way that you have to be except just the way you are it's a time for new beginnings to sing I love you and our minds with the peace, the power, the grace, the faith, and the love of God. This morning, we're going to remember, reflect, and radiate love. And I want to begin with a quote from our Unity co-founder, Charles Fillmore, in his book, On Talks of Truth. He wrote, Power is the faculty of the mind that propels outward, and it must necessarily have balance in some sort, in some other faculty, in order to hold its equilibrium. There is but one other faculty that has an opposite action, and that action is love whose office is attraction. When power and love are associated, the forces of being our, are equalized. We unify all the work that the Lord God has given us to do. And our dominion over the forces of being is exercised in peace. When peace is associated with the divine nature of love, there is no limit to our power. I think they're great words. Maybe a little abstract. It took me a few times to read it over to really understand it. So let me put them in a form of a story that will illustrate these ideas in a more tangible way. A woman came out of her house and saw three old men with long white beards sitting in her front yard. 
She did not recognize any of them, but walked up to them and said, I don't think I know you, but you look hungry and you must be hungry. Please come in and have something to eat. And one of them said, is your family home? She said, no, not right now. Then we cannot come in. We'll wait until the entire family is home, they replied. So in the evening, when her husband came home and the daughter, she told them about the three men outside. Her husband said, go tell them that we are all home now and invite them in. The woman went out and invited the men in. We do not go into a house together, they replied. See, his name is Success, one said, pointing to one of his friends. And pointing to another, he said, he is happiness. And I am love. Then he added, now go in and discuss with your family which one of us you want in your home. The woman went in and told her husband what was said, and her husband was overjoyed. Oh my gosh, she says, how nice. Since this is the case, let us invite success. Let him come and fill our home with success. His wife disagreed. My dear, why don't you, why don't we all invite happiness? Happiness is the most important thing, isn't it? Their daughter was listening and jumped in with her own suggestion. Would it not be better to invite love? I would love for our home to be filled with love. So let us take our daughter's advice, said the husband to his wife. Go out and invite love to be our guest. With that invitation, love got up and started walking toward the home. And much to the woman's surprise, the other two men got up and followed him. <laughs> Surprised, the woman said to success and happiness, I only invited love. Why are you coming in? The oldest, the old man replied together, well, if you had invited success or happiness in, then the other two of us would have had to stay out. But since you invited love, wherever he goes, we go with him. Because wherever there is love, there is also success and happiness. Hmm. Wherever there is love, there is also success and happiness. <clears throat> so this is what we're here to talk about this morning, to here to do this morning, to remember, to reflect on love. So then we can radiate it. Because when we do, our peace and our power and our joy and lives are enhanced in profound and beautiful ways. And that is what the man whose birth we celebrated last week was all about. He was all about living from love. He was all about radiating love. Many respected scholars agree that Jesus went, had made no claim to be the personal way to salvation. Those ideas came much later. And they were developed by many people. Stephen Mitchell in his book, The Gospel According to Jesus, wrote, we can't begin to see who Jesus was until we remove the layers of interpretation which the centuries have interposed between us and him, and which obscure his true face. <clears throat> like coat after coat of lacquer upon the vibrant colors of a masterpiece, the portrait of Jesus that emerges from the authentic passages in the gospel is of a man who has emptied himself of the mental trappings and spiritual baggage that separated him from the true life of spirit. His trust in God 
was as natural as breathing. And in God's presence, he himself was fully present. In his very language, he reflected God's deep love for everything that is earthly. For the sick, for the despised, for the morally admirable, as well as repugnant. For the weeds, as well as the flowers. For the lions as well as the lambs. <clears throat> he taught that just as the sun gives light to both wicked and good, and the rain brings nourishment to both righteous and unrighteous, God's compassion embraces all people. There are no preconditions for it. Nothing we need to do first. Nothing we have to believe. When we are ready to receive it, it is there. And the more we live in its presence, the more effortlessly it flows through us. When Jesus was born, there came onto this earth an individual who wanted to teach us what religion is supposed to be. Up until then, religion was about following the law, and there were a lot of them. Following a set guidelines and rules. But after he was born, religion became about love. He came to teach us about love. First, about God's love for us. So I love this little story a young boy studying in the Bible in Sunday school class. He was very upset about a story in the Old Testament where a man was gathering sticks on the Sabbath and God said through Moses that the man must die for violating the rules of the Sabbath. So the people took him outside the camp and stoned him. When his class got to the New Testament a few Sundays later, the little boy heard the story of the Pharisees coming to Jesus to complain that the disciples were picking corn on the Sabbath. And God said, through Jesus, the Sabbath was, was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. At that point, the little boy cried out, Boy! God sure got nicer in his older days. <laughs> it's a night and day difference. Old Testament to new. The truth is God didn't get any nicer. God's love for us never, ever, ever changes. But the consciousness of humanity shifted because of the presence of the love of Jesus. May we become our world professional radiators of love, which everybody who comes into our presence feels. What would that world be like? The strong presence of love being such a part of us will touch others profoundly. And this is the message of Jesus Christ. The message is only a real message when it comes alive in us. So I'd like to give you an example of what that might look or feel like. So I want to ask Barbara, if you'll kind, I forgot to talk to you about this, but if you wouldn't mind coming forward. Um, I just want to, no, you don't need the mic. I just want to give uh, them an example of <laughs> I just want you to notice the difference between Barbara and I. I 
Have you had enough? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, do you want to talk to me necessarily? No. No. Well, you want to know what's wrong. Do, do you want to you talk to her? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Is she attracting you? Sure. Am I attracting you? No. Oh. <laughs> I answered. What's the difference? You look aggravated. She had peace. You were sad and you she was in bad. What were you doing? I was radiating love. Yeah. She was radiating love, and I was in my head about all the things that I have to do. You know, I was just worried. I wasn't connecting because I was in my personality. That's all. I wasn't angry. I wasn't nothing. I was just in my personality. She was radiating love. And you see how attractive that was. So this is what happens when we, when we do, according uh, to John Wilcott Adams, this is what happens. When you generate love consciously, it becomes in you like a mighty steam locomotive. It makes you powerful and propels you through life down a more direct track and keeps you on course. It goes before you, making your way happier than you could ever imagine. And it follows along behind you, leaving in its path many happy memories and hearts that glow with its beauty. It is strewn like rose petals to be picked up by those on that same path. Like the fragrance of a rose Love influences everything that it touches and makes the lives of those who breathe in its sweetness more beautiful and worthwhile, richer and brighter. I found a Christmas letter that Ernest Holmes had written, which speaks to our theme of remembering, reflecting, and radiating on love. Radiating love. And as I'm reading it, I want you to reflect now on where your consciousness is and has been through this Christmas season. So here it is. Christmas is for remembrance. The love manifested through our gifts to each other typifies the offer of life and the givingness of spirit to its creations. The hands of the eternal are outstretched through our hands, and the heart of the infinite beats in the human breast. But the giver must give of himself, for the gift without the giver is bare. It is not then in lavish gifts that we find true giving, but in the sweet simplicity of remembrance, in the kindly thought, the tolerant mind, and the gentle act. Love alone can give love. Sympathy alone can sympathize. And only goodness can really do or be good. The one who gives for reward does not give at all. He seeks to bargain, to trade for spiritual gifts. Hence, he senses a loss in his own giving and finds no completion through the act. But he who gives half his meat to the hungry feels justified and is warmed by a real sense of comradeship. He has established an actual unity between himself and other offspring of his creation. So great causes succeed when there is a giving of humanity to humanity. With the check must come the one who wrote it, his interest, his enthusiasm, his love. The check must be a symbol of the desire to impart of himself, but love is warm. When heart speaks to heart, a divine conversation has taken place, a heavenly discourse. <coughs> So today, we're here to remember, to reflect, 
and radiate love. So I want, just for this short moment, I want you to close your eyes, and we're going to go through a practice that I discovered about 10 years ago that was created by a man named Dr. Jerry DeShazo. It's called The Gift of Love. So, here's how it goes. I agree today to be the gift of love. I agree to feel deeply love for others, independent of anything they are expressing, saying, or doing, or being. I agree to allow love, as I know it, to embrace my whole body, and then to just send it to them silently and secretively. I agree to feel it, accept it, breathe it into every cell of my body on each in-breath, and on each out-breath exhale any feeling unlike love. I like to think of a baby, that love you get from a baby, and I like to fill my whole body with that feeling. And on the exhale, any stress, anything that stresses me out, and I blow it out. I continue to breathe in love, and exhale anything unlike love. And before you know it, there isn't anything unlike love left. And then you can amplify that feeling of love within you and project it to others as a gift of love. This is my secret agreement. No one else is to know it. Take a deep breath and come back. If you like that practice and would like to play with it, it's at uh, thegiftoflove.com. It's very powerful. You can use it in anywhere, any place, any time. So let us now join our voices together in the words of our Unity co-founder, Charles Fillmore, who said in his 90s, I fairly sizzle with joy and enthusiasm to spring forth with a mighty faith to do the things that ought to be done by me. As we move into 2024, I invite you to embrace those words and spring forth with a mighty faith to do that which is to be done by you. And have a happy, happy new year. God bless. Okay, it's time for giving. Thank you, Jeannie. And during this time, um, we, Kate is coming up to read a letter that was sent to our church, and she'd like to share that letter with you. As you know, we're a tithing church, and um, um, our November tithes, just so you know, um, you can go ahead and pass things, um, went to a shop with a cop, the, the Arizona Rangers. So if you got your splash, that was in the first part of it. Um, they, we were able to get the, the check written by Kathy the day that we made the decision, and the next morning they were having an event, so we took it over to them, so that was really fun. It's the Arizona Rangers, and each year, this is the second or third year we've given to them, um, but I just wanted to tell you about that. <clears throat> but this letter is uh, for our December times, uh, or November times. Uh, thank you for your gift of $202 that we received. Entering the gate each day, I see the great gift that we have in serving the hundreds of guests that come to Andre House daily. It is because of your generosity that Andre House can provide services to our guests. Words alone cannot adequately express our gratitude. Although many changes have taken place in the Phoenix downtown area where we're located, 
We offer our guests a place of stability. Andre House is open and operating as it always has, treating each guest with respect and love. Recently, I was deeply humbled when I was walking into the building and I heard a guest telling a core staff member, I love you. Andre House is a place where our brothers and sisters experiencing homelessness can always expect a hug, a smile, or whatever encouragement they may need for that day on their journey. Daily, we continue to feed between 500 and 700 people. Oh my God. We provide clothing for over 200 people per week, and as well as offering the shower and laundry services. Also, we distribute blankets and other basic items to help those most in need. We cannot do this without your financial contribution. Thank you for being a vital part of the Andre House mission to make God known, loved, and served by serving our brothers and sisters. Peace and love, John Delaney, the Executive Director. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to share that with you. And also I wanted to point out, also in the splash, a very nice article that Kay Davis did on our unity. It was back in the religion area. Okay, with a nice picture from the um, November uh, picnic. So I just wanted to share those things with you. Go ahead, guys. You guys sing Yes. Alright. Yeah. Let's sing our offering lesson together. Wow. I am so blessed. You don't oh. sing. You have to mark. Yeah, that is me. That's you. Oh, I have, I have Yeah, you can do it. You're up All there. All right, let's sing it together. <laughs> Divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I am. All that I have and all that I circulate. I am, I am so blessed. blessed. Thank, Thank you, God. I will just sing one quick verse. Yeah. I am so blessed because I love to sing this with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> I think we all love it. It's not working. Let's just do it a cappella. Okay. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. gratitude together. We, we give thanks for these many blessings of today, and, and know they are but a symbol of the inexhaustible substance of the universe. I give thanks that ten times this much or more is now on its way to me and quickly manifests in perfect ways. And we have some announcements. Okay, uh, January 7th, which is next Sunday, uh, the day of the prayer class is also our Matthew's Crossing day. So the items that are most needed are listed here on the screen. Peanut butter, canned meat, tuna, vegetables, canned fruit, etc. You can look at those yourselves. And uh, we appreciate all donations to Matthew's Crossing. Uh, are there other announcements? The class. The class is next week, 1230, Julia's house. Sign up sheet. I know she is in the here. back. And our prayer partner today, I don't believe we have one. Would anybody volunteer? I'll do it. Oh, you Okay. Helen will be the prayer partner. Thank you, Helen, in the back. Uh, there's prayer team meeting every Wednesday, and the person to contact is Reverend Julia. That's at 10 a.m. Our Reiki Share Group is every Tuesday. Point of contact, Betty Gardner. And that's 9.30 a.m. Metaphysical Group every other Wednesday. That resumes, not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday. And Sheila Taylor can tell you more about that. And our music next week is, do you know Jean? Jim Sorensen. Jim Sorensen. We want to thank all our volunteers, uh, Barb, Charmaine, and Carrick, Sean, our sound engineer, uh, Amy for doing the filming. Thank you, Amy. And um, 
in Amy Senna. Thank you. Yes. So I just wanted to say, I've said it before, but I'll say it again. I wrote two books, and I will leave them in the back if anybody would like to borrow them. If anybody would like to own them, you can give me some kind of contribution to the pub publication. But that was me. I used to be still beautiful. <laughs> I used to be, you know. Thank you, Barb, and thank you to everyone, and Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Please join us in singing this very familiar song by the Judds. I ain't Naomi Judd. Love can build a bridge. And if you'd like, you can stand up. Turn up. over here so we can all see the words.